Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, let us learn about controllers. Now, in our previous video, we have been using ng init directive to initialize our data, and then we have been using expressions to display them onto our screen. Let us quickly recollect with an example. Go ahead and create a div tag. Within the div tag, use ng init and initialize name to be equal to Chandler Bing. Now within the div tag, we can make use of our expression to display the name onto your screen. So go ahead and save it and reload your browser and it says Chandler Bing. Now using ng in the directive is probably not the ideal way to initialize our data, which brings us to controllers. Now controller helps us to get data onto our view. Controller is where we define values and functions that make up the behavior of our Angular application. So let us go ahead and create our very first controller. Let us go to app.js and type app.controller. Now we specify a name to the controller. Let us say my controller. And we need to specify something called dollar scope now dollar scope is a javascript object and it is the glue between our controller and our view so that is how data is made available to both the controller and our index.html the second thing we need to specify is a function which takes dollar scope as its argument now within our function or the con constructor function we can go ahead and type dollar scope dot name is equal to say Ross Geller. So name is a variable and by attaching it to the scope object we can be using it in our index.html page. Go ahead, put a semicolon, save it. Now let's go back to our index.html. Okay, so we have created our controller, but how do we tell our HTML when to know a controller is there? So, you guessed it, it's a directive. Replace the ng init directive with ng controller directive. Now, the ng controller directive, we have to specify the name of the controller. So, in our case, it is my controller. Now, within the controller, the scope since the name variable is attached to the scope, we can go ahead and directly use the name variable in our controller. So if we save it, reload it, then we have Ross Geller. Suppose we have another variable, $scope.h is equal to, let's say, 28. Go ahead and save it. Go back to your index file and type h, save it, reload it. You have Ross Geller and his 28. Now what happens if you don't attach the dollar scope to our variable? So let us say weight is equal to 150 and let's specify weight as an expression. So save it, save it, reload it. So the weight is not displayed. Now that's the speciality, that's the speciality of the scope object. The scope object is going to make the variable value available to both the controller and our view. Now what happens if we have, let's go ahead and remove weight. What happens if we use the scope variable outside a controller? So let us remove wait let us remove our age and outside the div tag let us type age save it go ahead and reload it so now we see that there's only raw color that is printed out so what the ng controller directive specifies is the scope of the controller so we have a controller called my controller and the scope of the controller is within this div tag so any variable that is attached to the scope object can be accessed within this div tag, but anywhere outside, it, it can't be accessed. 
All right, so that's pretty much about controllers. We created a controller and we specified a name to our controller. We also specify the scope object that the function uses and the scope object is used to glue the data between our controller and our index.html. The scope variable, the scope object rather, makes the data available in our index.html to be used as an expression, but the scope object can be is limited to the ng controller and outside the ng controller the scope is not valid anyway thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll, I'll see you in the next video